Thank you, Jessica. And as we anchor ourselves into this service today, yes, we are all one people in a world that is awakening. One people on one planet. And we are family. So we take this moment to just feel that, to step into that knowingness, and just to take a minute to thank God that we have this day and this center and these people who are so dedicated to, to bringing the message to you today. 
We bless our children. And we bless all of you that we're missing terribly. We bless Reverend Don today as he delivers an amazing message, our music department. Mm. I just feel completely soaked in blessings today. So please help me anchor this by saying, and, and so, so it is. is. Woo. Well, good morning, uh, good Alaska. Morning. Good morning, Alaska Center for Spiritual Living. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm very excited today. Our candle lighter for our honoring all spiritual paths is one of our Prac 2 students that's about to panel, um, Stevie Lanier. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we are an interfaith gathering, a spiritual community that honors all teachings and all spiritual teachers. So, we're going to begin the ceremony that celebrates the oneness of life, which acknowledges that all people and all faiths come for the one universal presence, which we call spirit. And so, let us begin. The Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. Shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of pristine spirituality. Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. Islam, honoring the path of submission to the will of God as the highest calling. New thought, us, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. Now our last candle is the healing candle of love and we invite you in the stillness of your own mind to bring to awareness the names of anyone that you wish to be included in this healing flame of love and of light. And so now that our flames are fully lit, we move forward into our celebration, realizing and reaffirming that all paths lead to God. Thank you, Stevie. So, you know, I'm always going to ask you to do this with gusto and joy from wherever you are. We're going to do our uh, purpose, vision, and mission statements. Um, so our purpose, you know, why are we here? To we awaken and inspire love and oneness. So what's our vision? What do we want to create? What do we want to become? We are an empowered, uplifting, inclusive community. Now, our, our mission, how are we going to do this? We teach spiritual transformation with grace and joy. And gusto. And gusto. And gusto. gusto. There you go. Oh, so today's sacred reading comes from a Science of Mind magazine. It's not too far back, from September of 2017. It was written by Reverend Dr. Uh, Michelle Medrino, who is out of California, Mile High, I think. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Colorado, not California. It has often occurred to me that one of the concepts that just about every faith tradition on our planet agrees on is forgiveness. I believe this is because of the core of our being 
we have a collective understanding that forgiveness is a key concept for us to live an open-hearted life. I spent years stubbornly hanging on to anger and resentment about someone in my life. I was full of the stories about how wrong he was and what a bad person he was. My thoughts would become obsessed with the pain I felt he had caused me and how he had let me down and disappointed me. One day it dawned on me that my anger was not impacting him one bit. He was living a happy life, being him, and even if he could tell that I was angry with him, he was not letting it stop him from living the life he wanted to live. Yet, it was stopping me. I was essentially living in toxic thoughts and emotions, while he was off having fun. I quickly became willing to do the inner work to forgive. The restoration of peace and ease into my heart allowed me to stop, step back into my own life. Now, it is a regular part of my practice. When I feel limitation, I ask myself, is there someone I need to forgive? So often, I have let my own anger and resentment become the anchor place of my creative efforts. Forgiveness frees me from my own self-imposed limitations. Thank you, Jessica. Aaron, beautiful. Beautiful as always. Ah, good morning and welcome to the Alaska Center uh, for Spiritual Living. My name is Linda Steiner and I'm uh, one of a few licensed practitioners who are about to have a bunch more join us next week, but a little bit on that uh, in a minute. Uh, we are staying virtual right now with the, the COVID numbers climbing and things happening, uh, we stand in our love and our hope that everybody stays healthy and 
because of that, we're gonna, we're gonna remain virtual for a while. So next, next Saturday, oh my God, talk about a radiating center of love and light. I have been waiting for this moment for uh, about five years. Um, but about two and a half years ago, we actually started the practitioner classes. And so this coming Saturday, they are actually doing their oral panels. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. That, oh, I'm just like buzzing from that. Um, so this is the last piece. This is the very last piece. And as each one panels, they will um, be told instantly if they're licensed or not. So we get to celebrate immediately. And so this is where you guys come in. Next Sunday, write this down, you're gonna be hearing from me. We're gonna invite you guys to get in your cars. And between 12.10 and 12.20, 12.30, we're gonna do, have you heard all of those birthday celebrations where people are driving by and honking their horns and bringing balloons and celebrating? Well, we're inviting all of you, all of you to come next Sunday and do that with us to celebrate our brand new licensed practitioners. I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. Um, this is gonna be awesome and amazing. And what's gonna make it awesome and amazing is all of you guys also showing up to help us celebrate. Mm -hmm. So before I close out announcements, I just wanna give a, hi, Silky. Hi, thanks for watching. Do you want to know who Silky is? <gasps> Neil's mom! So, all right, just want to say hi. She's such a precious gal. And now back to more amazing music. Rain down. 
I think that when the good Lord passed out musical talent, somehow you two snuck in line twice. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow. What a wonderful thing it is to be here in the morning to listen to you practice and warm up and work together to do this. So thank you both. Well, good morning. Welcome to the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living. I read recently where the most important thing that we can give to one another is our time. And so I want to thank you this morning for watching, for inviting us into your home, and for giving us your time. Thank you, and we are deeply honored to be a part of your Sunday morning. The title of my talk today is Freedom from Ignorance. And that was the idea on Tuesday, but sometimes things happen between Tuesday and when I actually start getting the inspiration for the talk. And last night, about 7 o'clock, things still weren't bubbling up. And so I don't know how well the title is going to fit this week, but we're going to go with it. So my three major points are going to be forgiveness gives us freedom. The key to forgiveness is in recognizing our oneness. And the third point is ignorance can hinder our forgiveness. Many years ago in my business career, prior to ministry, um, for a while I uh, stepped away from GE and I was a, an independent representative and while most of my lines were GE, I had a few that weren't and I had one of those non-GE lines that had an opportunity for a very significant sale and I had a guy, well just be blunt about it, he screwed me out of a lot of money, a, a lot and that was a lot of money in those days. Um, it's still a lot of money. Uh, and I was very, very resentful. I did not like that man, and I still don't. Um, but I carried that resentment around with me for a long, long time. And I ended up at the center here. At that time, it was called the Church of Religious Science. And I ended up taking the foundations class. 
And I was in that foundations class with Tony Shannon and Susan Brakeall, Tim Saunders. There were a, a group of us. It was a really great class. And we got to that part on forgiveness. And we had to forgive some people. And I thought, you know, that's one guy I ain't never going to be able to forgive. I'll tell you, he done me wrong. Bad. He really did me wrong. But as we worked through that, I came to the realization that I'm sitting up here in Alaska and I'm still stewing about this. I'm still mad. I'm still resentful. Resentful. I'm still carrying all this around. Is he bothered? This guy wasn't bothered at all. He's in his mansion on Lake Washington with his new dock and his new boat and living the life of luxury. This guy is living the great life and I'm the one that's still all upset over this event. Where is the justice in that? And I didn't change overnight, but it woke up something in me that helped me realize that if I'm ever going to get out of my prison, out of my bondage, the key is going to be in forgiveness. It took me a long time, but I eventually was actually able to forgive the guy. In our teaching, we look for the common threads. We look for the things that are common to many, many, many religions. And forgiveness is one of those. Forgiveness is one of the things that persists through many, many faith traditions. And when you see that much smoke, you got to help but think that there's going to be some fire in there somewhere. And, and forgiveness is one of those important parts. Uh, I have a quote from, from Ernest Holmes, and he starts out by honoring one of the most common faith traditions, and, and this comes from the Abrahamic traditions. It's actually from uh, Christianity, and this comes from uh, the book of Matthew, and it's commonly known as the Lord's Prayer. But there is a line in there that is really fitting, and Holmes starts out by quoting that. He says, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Holmes continues, This places immediate salvation within the reach of all, but automatically causes us to suffer so long as we impose suffering. We could not ask for a more complete justice, a greater givingness. The nature of God is revealed as infinite tenderness coupled with an exact law. And what this is saying is that as long as we carry around the burden of resentment, as long as we are holding others harm for what we perceive that they have done to us, we are the ones that are imprisoned. But under this magnificent work that we call life, that we call God, that we call this thing that we experience on this plane, we have been given the opportunity to free ourselves from the, the bondage of resentment and hate, and the desire to get even. And that gift is in forgiveness. The nature of God is revealed as infinite tenderness coupled with an exact law. So what exactly is forgiveness? What am I really talking about here? Well, forgiveness does not mean that you forget or you condone something that has been to you or against you. It does not mean that you resume a relationship or a harmful or an abusive situation. What it does mean is that you release and move on. So in order to give us a way around this, I've come up with a, a way for forgiveness. How to forgive in four easy steps by Reverend Don. I didn't find this in a book or anything. I just made it up. I think that the first thing that is important that we do, if we're going to really forgive somebody, is we have to step into it. We have to feel the experience. We have to acknowledge what happened to us. Feel the hurt. Feel the pain. Feel the resentment and the fear. 
absolutely embody it and feel it. And that's okay because that's how we move through it. Now, we don't want to dwell there, but we can go there long enough to feel those feelings. Feel it. So step number two then is to identify any part that you may have had in that. And in that, be self-compassionate. Many times we have a part in the conflicts that create the desire within us for forgiveness. We have a part. And if there is that, we need to identify it. And we need to be compassionate with ourselves as we do that. Very often times what we discover is, I didn't know. I didn't realize what I had done to contribute to that. In, in my situation, there were things that I could have done to prevent that. But I didn't know. And that gave him the opportunity to step in and, and do the, the wrong that he did to me. The third step in this then is to ask, what can I learn? What can I learn from this? Look for the blessing. How can this situation be for you instead of against you? Right now we have this COVID virus going on and you know, there are people who are resentful toward God, the universe, spirit, whatever name you choose to call the divine creative force of the universe. And there are people that are basically saying, God, why are you doing this to me? Why is this virus inflicted upon mankind? And there is a resentment in there. But if we can stop and we can say, what possible good can come from this virus? This is called a, a bright idea. Remote parts of Kenya are receiving the internet thanks to a gigantic plastic balloon. And I think we have a picture of this giant balloon. Google's Project Loon and Telcom Kenya have combined to create this project. It's the first balloon-powered internet to launch in Africa. It's the first non-emergency commercial deployment in the world. The project uses a fleet of 35 of these giant balloons floating in constant motion in the stratosphere to provide 4G LTE service spanning large parts of central and western Kenya. Each balloon is made out of roughly a tennis court size sheet of polyethylene. The project was accelerated and created because of the pandemic and the need to stay connected throughout the world. So in spite of all of the misery and death and agony and everything else, there has been something good. We've been able to connect parts of the world that were never before reached by the internet. Luckily, they haven't reached the hills outside of Talkeetna. <laughs> and in this, when we can recognize that maybe there is some good in some of the, the darkest situations, we can embrace the concept that God is in, around, and through all of everything. And then the fourth step is to release and let it go. After she had been rescued, Anne Frank was interviewed. And after going through the entire Holocaust and all of the, the pain and the suffering and everything else, in this interview, Anne Frank was asked a question and her reply was, in spite of everything, I believe that people are good at heart. You see, she was able to release it. She was able to let it go. In spite of all of everything, I believe that people are basically good at heart. And that is just a segue into point number two, which is the key is in recognizing our oneness. So we take this proposition that this divine creative force, whatever name you choose to assign to it, God, spirit, the thing itself, this thing, creative force, made all of everything, and that this infinite presence is perfect, 
then there must be a reason for all of everything that was created and all of everything that was created must be fit together in a giant uh, jigsaw puzzle of eternity that all of this is connected and all of us must be connected. We must all be together. And we're learning that today in modern quantum physics. It's all coming to be. Uh, I have a quotation here from Erwin Schrodinger. And this is the owner of the famous Schrodinger's cat. For those of you who know uh, quantum uh, uh, theory and quantum physics, Schrodinger said, quantum physics thus reveals a basic oneness of the universe. Quantum physics thus reveals a basic oneness of the universe. Ernest Holmes said pretty much the same thing when he says, by cosmic consciousness, we mean one's consciousness of his unity with the whole. One's awareness of his connection with the whole. And in that, his connection with each and every part of the whole. I like to call these the, the fingerprints of the divine, but the connection of all of us. And we'll go back to World War II Holocaust. Um, I think we've got another picture of this as well. Um, yeah. Lily Ebert, she was a teenager when she and her family were taken to the Auschwitz Nazi concentration camp and left to die. But she didn't die. She was liberated from that hell in 1945. And a man, a soldier that liberated that camp came in and he gave her a German banknote. And he could not speak uh, German. He, he couldn't speak with her. But he had written on this banknote wishing her good luck and happiness and encouraged her to start a new life. She was the first person that she had met that was kind to her. And she carried that German banknote for 75 years. And she showed her this German banknote to her great grandson. And being young and technologically connected said, wow, I think we could find this guy that gave that to you. And he got on Twitter and told the story and he said, I'll bet we can find him within 24 hours. Now, I don't know whether it took 24 hours, but after he posted that, the replies came flooding in and sure enough, he found a lead. He, it led him to Private Hyman Schulman, who was an American Jewish soldier. Sadly, uh, 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 Schulman and his wife had very recently passed away. However, they arranged, arranged to meet with his grandson and uh, granddaughter over Zoom. This is just a proof over time that love will conquer any of this, even Auschwitz, even the Holocaust. We can overcome that with the power of love. That's her on the, the left and uh, grandson uh, on, the, on the right. Ernest Holmes again. This is from an article that he wrote in the 30s. Looking at things from the belief that they are separate from the divine presence is like looking through dark glasses. While viewing all things as acts and manifestations of the divine presence is to view them as they really are and have them given back to us as though God itself had personally brought them to us. Looking at things as if we're separate from God is like looking through dark glasses and yet looking at things as acts and manifestations of that infinite divine loving supporting presence is to view them as they really are. My last fingerprints of the divine story 
um, it's called 16 Years and Two Kidneys. Um, a lady by the name of Terry Huntington's husband, Brian, died uh, 16 years ago. And he was an organ donor, and his organs went on to give life to four people because of all the uh, rules and regulations, uh, HIPAA and secrecy and all that stuff. There was no opportunity for her to meet them until after a year but she pursued it she found out the recipients of her husband's organs and one of them was a man by the name of Jeff Granger and he had received uh, one of Brian's kidneys and his pancreas and Terry connected with them and they corresponded uh, over the years and after 10 years or so it was revealed that um, Jeff's uh, cancer, his disease, uh, was back and it had attacked his other kidney. And the first thing Terry did is, well, I'll see if we can have one of mine. And they did the, the search, they did the match, and she came up and she matched. And he thought it was that she wasn't serious, that. She, I mean, here it is, the wife of the man that gave him life the first time is now giving one of her kidneys. I know this story touches Judy Wolf as a, as a kidney donor, uh, how appropriate this is. So she went through with it, and she donated one of her kidneys to him, and today he is doing fine, and she is happy. She stated, Granger's got a new kidney, and Harrington's kidney sits right next to her late husband's, we are back together. These kinds of things happen all the time. And these I call the fingerprints of the divine. This is the presence of that infinite creative force that is guiding us, that is helping us, that is gently moving us along toward a transformation. And sometimes not so gently. Sometimes it's a whack in the face. Sometimes it's a sudden shift. But that force is always, always supporting us and moving us along. But sometimes we're not aware of that. And that brings us to my third point, and that is ignorance can hinder forgiveness. And so rather than a big, long point, I'm going to have one final story. Um, I... I try never to tell a story more than once. But this story, I think I'm going to be telling a lot because this is a powerful story. It's about a man by the name of Lou Ress. I believe that's how you pronounce his name, R-O-E-S-S. -S. He lives in Parachute, Colorado. Uh, it's a, in the mountains on the western slope of Colorado, and he invited his granddaughter up. Uh, she came up to visit Grandma and Grandpa, and part of the thing that the family did, he had a fire pit in the backyard, and they had a, an evening campfire and decided to roast some marshmallows. And this is a little girl, I think, judging from the story, she might be three or maybe even four, I'm not sure. But he cut a stick, a green stick, so it wouldn't catch on fire, and and he got a marshmallow and he put it on the end of her stick and he kind of showed her what to do, how to do it. And like many kids, she got it too close to the flames and marshmallow caught on fire and it caught it fire. So he blew it out and uh, by now that was not much more than a piece of charcoal in the end of her stick. So he pulled it off and he threw it in the fire. He says, well, let's try again, dear. So he put another marshmallow on. He says, now keep it from getting into the flame. And so she was patient for a bit down by the coals. But sure enough, she got a little higher. And well, she got it into the flames. It caught fire again. And so he, okay. So he blew it out again. And he took the marshmallow off. And he threw it into the fire. Now, dear, this time, be careful. Don't get it up there in the flame. So he put on another marshmallow for it. She kept it down by the coals and she turned it and she got this marshmallow, a perfect golden brown. The marshmallow was perfect. She pulled it back out and he says, oh dear, that's beautiful, that's wonderful. She said, thank you, Grandpa, thank you so much. This is really great. 
And she reached down and she took the marshmallow off and she threw it in the fire. She didn't know she was supposed to eat the marshmallow. She thought that roasting marshmallows meant you cooked them and threw them in the fire. And sometimes we're a lot like that. When we do not recognize, when we don't know the power of forgiveness, we can never reap the benefits. And we will keep throwing our marshmallows in the fire forever until we can learn the power of forgiveness and we can learn to enjoy our marshmallows. My final takeaway for today, the thing that I want everybody to remember, this is a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We must develop and maintain the capacity to forgive. He who is devoid of the power to forgive is devoid of the power to love. And so it is with our awareness that that divine presence is constantly with us. Through all of everything that we do. And that divine presence is guiding us, is helping us. And if we'll only learn not to throw our marshmallows into the fire. We can complete and move toward this transformation. So with that in mind, I invite my colleagues, the practitioners, whether they're here in the room or not, or whether they are, are scattered around the internet and our Prac 2 students, I invite you to join me in holding our congregation our city, our state, our nation, the entire world in love and light. And simply recognizing that that infinite power is indeed conspiring with us in every moment. We get our bloated nothingness out of the way and we allow the divine current to support us. As we go through life's challenges, we can recognize that forgiveness is such a powerful tool to release us from the bondage of resentment and hate and fear. And so we just simply step back. We let it go. We let it be. And we recognize that in spite of all of everything, people are basically good. And we know that behind the appearance of disease, behind the appearance of this virus, that there is indeed a divine purpose, there is a greatness that is coming with each and every one of us. We know that in spite of the appearance of lack and limitation, we live in an abundant universe that is always supporting us. And most of all, we recognize that even though we may feel separate, we may feel distant, we are never distant. For that infinite force is with us at every moment in everything we do. God's love is indeed within each and every one of us at this and in every moment. And so we can just give thanks. We can forgive. We can step back and when release, we can let it go and let it be. And so it is. So grateful, I am one in the spirit all around me. I'm thankful, so grateful, I trust in God. I surrender, I surrender, I am one in the spirit all around me. I surrender, I surrender, I trust in God. I am thankful, so grateful. I am one in the spirit all around me. I am thankful, so grateful. I trust in God. I surrender, I surrender. I am one in the spirit all around me. I surrender, I surrender. I 
trust in God. I'm thankful, so grateful. I am one in the spirit all around me. I'm thankful, so grateful. I trust in God. <laughs> Now is the uh, time in the service where we are afforded the opportunity to uh, participate in the law of circulation. This is when we get to, oh, look at this. We've got, oh, the uh, basket on a stick again. That's pretty good. Well, here, I better do my part in uh, circulation here. Get my affirmation. What's my affirmation say? <laughs> Make it happen. <laughs> All right. Make it happen. So uh, I'd like to recognize some of the people that have been on today, probably uh, miss some, but I do want to recognize that uh, another one of our uh, students, uh, Prac 2 students, Judy Wolf was on, Don Macon, oh Don, I've got to talk to you, uh, <laughs> Linda and Lisa, Sassy is on today, Joan Heidel, Tammy, Kaleem, uh, Luann, <laughs> Cindy Hensley from her bed. Oh, poor Cindy. We can all send our prayers to Cindy. I think she threw her back out. Mm -hmm. Janet Hanston, Keith Montgomery, <laughs> Silky is here, Michelle Scammon, Claire from her bed too, <laughs> Marilyn Connolly from Fairbanks, Candy Moore, Robert from the Valley, Judith Mack, Angie, and Jean Karwowski. Welcome, Jean. So thank you all for joining us today. Um, so join me in our affirmation. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, and so it is. Our thoughts are prayers, and we are always praying. Our thoughts are prayers, be careful what you're saying seek a higher consciousness a state of peacefulness and know that God is always there and every thought becomes a prayer our thoughts are prayers and we are always praying our thoughts are prayers, be careful what you're saying. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of peacefulness, and know that God is always there. And every thought becomes a prayer. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And uh, just before we close out, uh, please remember that you can always go to our website and enter a prayer request. We are here for you 24 hours a day. Um, and also, don't forget, next Sunday after service, we're going to do a drive-by celebration. So get ready to do that. And Midnight is very anxious to see everybody. So stop on by. So in closing today... Who can you forgive today? Wake up to realizing, releasing yourself from the prison of your non-forgiveness. Feel the hurt. Identify your part. Ask, what can I learn from this? Release and let go. Take off your dark glasses and step into the consciousness of your connection to all. Don't throw your perfectly toasted marshmallow into the fire. Who can you forgive today? Please help me anchor this by saying, and so it is. All right, this is another one where everyone at home, you can stand up and do a call and response, so I'll do one line, and then you'll do the next. I shine, feet dance.
hands louder, guys. Heart sing. We give it a chance. Spirit loves to dance. Spirit loves to dance. Spirit loves to dance. Spirit loves to dance. One more time. Spirit loves to dance. Spirit loves to dance. Lady Gekka, I take one week off and I have to be retrained. Our affirmation today, I forgive myself. I forgive myself. If I burn my marshmallow. If I burn my marshmallow. I recognize I am a perfect child of God. I recognize I'm a perfect child of God. And so it is. And so it is. I shine. a chance spirit loves to dance spirit loves to dance spirit loves to dance spirit loves to dance one more time 